Well, good morning, YouTube land out there. Welcome to my inspirational content once again. We are on Joshua 14 and our 191st day to this journey. Let's grab our Bibles and follow along with me. I'm having ice water and let's not waste any more time. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it this morning. Have a lot of things going on today. Uh, these are the inheritances in the land of Canaan distributed to the Israelites by Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers, houses of their tribes. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord commanded Moses, for the nine and a half tribes. For the nine and one half tribes. For Moses had given an inheritance to the two and one half tribes beyond the Jordan. But to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the people of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and no part was given in the land to the Levites except cities in which to live with their pasture lands for their livestock and for their possession. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the Israelites did, and they divided the land. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb son of Japanah, the Kenizzite said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to scout out the land, and I brought him report as it was in my heart. But my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, Yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, Surely the land on which your feet have walked shall be an inheritance to you and your children always, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years since the Lord spoke his word to Moses. While the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day 85 years old. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Um, let's re go to our Google summary. The nine tribes and a half to have their inheritance. That's what this lesson is about. The nine tribes and a half. To have their inheritance. The Israelites must occupy the new conquest. Canaan would have been subdued in vain if it had not been inhibited, inhabited. Yet every man might not go and settle where he pleased. God shall choose our inheritance for us. Let us survey our heritage of present mercy, our prospect for the land of promise, eternal in the heavens. Is God any respecter of persons? Now, Caleb's request is, give me this mountain or Hebron, because it was formerly God's promise to him. And he will let Israel know how much he valued keeping his promise. Those who live by faith, Value that which is given by God's promise far above what is given by providence only. It was now in the Anakin's possession. What Caleb wants is now in the Anakin's possession. And Caleb will let Israel know how little he feared the enemy. And that he would encourage them to push on their, their conquests. Caleb answered to his name, which signifies all heart. Hebron was settled on Caleb and his heirs because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Happy are we if we follow him. Singular piety shall be crowned with singular favor. May God add a blessing to the reading of that summary. Caleb knew that God made him a promise. And even though he was 40 years old, at the time when the promise was made, he knew that God kept him alive throughout all these battles while they possessioned the land. 
God kept him alive so he can inherit that promise, so he can get that promise that God promised him. At the age of 85, he still received that promise. God might not make his promise to come when we want it to, but it's always on time. I bet even at the age of 85, he was more than happy to receive that promise. We can't say that he would have been more happy to receive it 25 years earlier or whatever, but at that present time, he didn't know no better time to receive that promise from God. And God is good. And let's keep that in mind for ourselves. Whatever God has for us, it is for us. If you're seeking God for a husband, <clears throat> you might be 35 years old today. God might send that right man in your life when you're about 50. Don't think, oh man, I don't want a husband. I'm going to be 50 years old. Believe me, if God has that right man to come into your life at the age of 50, it's still going to be perfect timing. You're going to receive that husband just like if you was still 35 years old. You might even receive him better at the age of 50 than being at age 35 because you've lived long enough to learn how to appreciate when God sends a man of God in your life or vice versa. You might be a man seeking for a wife. Same thing. When God sends that woman of God in your life, you might be more appreciative just by waiting a little while longer. God is good. Please like the video and have a very blessed Monday. Bye.